In this tutorial, I'm going to go over how to do scan alignment inside of DesignX. So as you see on screen, I kind of have a mess here, right? I, it's kind of hard to see what's going on. But the idea here is I went ahead and I scanned this bracket in two orientations sitting inside of a vise. And so you can see that I scanned it once, I flipped it over and scanned it again, and I moved the the vise around a little bit. So you can see that there are two groups of scans because these scans are different colors in each orientation. So the first thing you see over here on the left hand side is there are scans, but they're not, you can't tell which group is which, right? So um, in this instance, what I can do is I can come over here and I can look at the numbers for the different scan groups and I can select and I can hide and show and we'll just say hide so you can see I hid pretty much all the scans from one orientation so it looks like uh, 70 was the highest scan so I went ahead and just went from 70 to 46 and hit all those. Now, DesignX does allow you to grab these scans and do a shift select and come over and say new group and you can put those inside of a group and I can select the other ones and move those to a new group as well. And once they're in there, you can hide and show each group. So you can see there's that one group. I'll turn it off and there's another group. Right? Um, so Usually, I'll go ahead and I'll start aligning these two groups together, but the vice is going to throw off the alignment because here the vice is grabbing there and there it's, it's, it's grabbing there. So before I start that, I'll go ahead and grab my selection tools and I'll turn this on, turn visible only off, and I'll just use the rectangle selector and come in and hit delete and remove the vice from group one and because the vice is kind of almost in the same spot i can just not even move my view and window in and get rid of the vice in group two so now you'll see i have these two groups i need to align the groups together in order to do that you have this align between scan data tool and you see just like that icon shows you can align the two groups when you come into a line between scan data, there's three different kinds of alignment. One is auto based on auto guess, local based on auto guess. So the software will just try to fit them all together on its own. So believe it or not, it does sometimes really work. But what I always say in my classes is if it does work, go ahead and play the lottery for that day. Because it's really hard for it to just look at a bunch of random scans and piece them together and put together that puzzle of how they go. Um, so it does, it's amazing how sometimes it does work, but this really is not a feasible option for your daily workflow. Really what you're going to do is you use both of these. You're going to use local based on pick point, And then after you use local based on pick points, you're going to use the global and find to tighten up the overlapping uh, areas between them. It'll tighten up the alignment. So if I go local based on pick point, what you can do is select the object that you don't want to move. And then you can click on moving. And then you say, this is the object that I do want to move. And then as a general rule, what I always do is I will put the parts in the same orientation on screen. And as you can see, it is critical when you're scanning to scan overlapping areas in order to align the objects back together. Now, for some that may be self-explanatory, but if you're new to scanning, that's a key idea that you need to know before you even start scanning is you have to scan the same areas in order to lock them in and you have to have good overlap of good geometry in order to piece scans back together, right? So it's, it's critical that when you're uh, scanning to go ahead and uh, have overlapping areas. Another thing that's really helpful is when you do pick these points to pick them in key areas that are real easy to identify on both sets of scans. They don't have to be perfect, but it is helpful if they're close because look at this 
how close it fits together just by me clicking those three points. Now you can add more points if you want, but in many cases, why do more work when it doesn't really matter? So in this instance, three worked really great. You can see that it fits together. So you hit this checkbox next to method. The software does a little bit of best fitting for you, and then it'll just stay inside of this dialog. Now, when you're still in the dialog, I actually will toggle over to the global find next. And what that's going to do is take all of the individual scans. So you see it took both of those groups now, and they're both in reference here. All of those scans. Now, instead of aligning the two groups together, we're going to shift over to global find. And we're just going to tell it, click on all meshes. Now, the software has the ability to wiggle or move around all of the little individual pieces because you can see sometimes there's little areas where they don't quite fit together it's allowed to tweak them and allow them to fit together better um, so i always always run that sometimes i run it multiple times depending on what i see on screen this area right here is a sign that there's a very good alignment right there, right? Where the scans bisect each other over and over and over again. That means that the scans are very accurate themselves and they are essentially coincident or almost coincident with each other in those areas. Now, there will always be little areas like this, especially um, depending on the skill level of whoever is scanning and what type of scanner it is and things like that. You see little areas like this, that's actually kind of like a flyer or an artifact that's floating out in space. And we'll show you how to take care of that in a moment. But you'll see that right away, this actually tightened up the alignment pretty good. So once I, once I get an alignment there, I'm ready to go on to the merging stage. Like, so you can run that multiple times, by the way. So if it doesn't look like it's, it's quite there for you. You can go ahead and uh, and um, run it multiple times. Now, at this stage, you can come in and window in and delete things if you want to from different angles. Um, if I need to do that, you know, I can select areas. For this one right here, if you click on that edge of that scan, it will show you that this is scan number 68. Now, scan number 68 is probably in group two. Um, so if you see scan number 68, you can say, I want to show this only. Then you can come in and use things like this paintbrush. And if you want to change the size of that paintbrush, hold Alt and move side to side. And holding Shift will add. So if I want to remove some of these other artifacts, I can do that if they don't look like it, things that I want. And I can just kind of give that scan a once over. If th this just looks like a completely poor scan altogether, you know, I could just go ahead and nuke the whole thing just by deleting it from the tree if I want to, especially if I don't need it. You know, that's the thing that you can do. You can just get rid of it. Now, to show everything again, I like to just click on all the mesh group and you can hit show or show this only and it'll basically bring everything back and again i kind of go through this uh a little bit and remove some of the stuff i don't always rely on the software um to do everything for me so 46 if i click on 46 it'll show me where 46 is in the tree here and then i can say show this only and then i like using again the paintbrush come in and sometimes I'm aggressive with this. If I have a lot of overlap of scans, I don't need necessarily need this data here. So I can select more than I really uh, normally would to remove it. Yeah, that looks like a little flyer right there. And say so show this only, come back here. And then there's another area. So click on it. That's 46 again. So I should have looked at it a little closer when I was in there. But yeah, so it didn't. This is one of those areas where you're like, I, you can't tell just by looking at it as an individual scan that that area really is not accurate. Something happened to the scan. So I could, I, again, I could always delete everything on the scan. 
or just get real aggressive with my cropping. And I just kind of give it a once over and I just look for anything. Like I, this text, I'm not going to worry too much about it anyway, but it depends on how much time I have, how, how much time I'll spend on fixing stuff manually. Um, but this, honestly, the software will do a pretty good job at merging these guys together. So once I have it cleaned up, the next step is to go over to merge. Um, surface merge, we don't usually use it on scans like this. Surface merge, you have the ability to, um, to merge multiple scans, and you just have this one slider tight to loose. Um, uh, it's an older algorithm, so I don't use it as much. I, for lightweight tasks, I'll use volume merge. It's a pretty... It's a pretty aggressive smoothing uh, uh, merge, and it lightens up the scan quite a bit. So I use that one quite a bit. Mesh construction is our most accurate one. So if you, it takes a little bit longer to run, but it's going to create a very accurate mesh. Um, this is kind of like your go-to middle-of-the-road one. This one has a little more smoothing, makes it lighter weight. And then HD is designed originally for long-range or very large um, scans, like uh, scans of a whole building or something. That's what we originally made HD mesh construction for. It also has a lot of smoothing and stuff, um, but there are times that it works very well for scans like this. So I'm going to use this one. A couple things. Most of these, I actually keep the default settings, but with this one, I don't really touch these two sliders, but I do take this slider all the way down, extending boundaries to fill holes. Um, and then I'll use curve to fill the holes. Um, and then I turn off remove original data because I may not like the result of the merge, right? Um, so once I make those changes, we'll go ahead and run it. So it finished and you can look, look at what it did with the text, all that noise from before. If I turn these on, it was able to kind of remove all those outliers and figure out what that text is and look at the scan. It's really good. So that is how you align scans and merge.